The day's done. We just had an amazing dinner. So let's f***ing go. No! <laughs> <laughs> In the desert. <laughs> so if we get two bags of watercress here and one bag of mint, we don't have a call for mint, but I figure it's gonna go into my cilantro chimichurri. So this week for the dinner, we decided to go vegan. It doesn't just have to be tofu and tofurkeys. Oh, is that the mint right there? Yeah, you've got mint everywhere along in here, all down through here. Oh, this is watercress. You got some big old mint leaves too. Usually when we're harvesting, we're kind of gathering in abundance. And then when we get back, <clears throat> we can separate, clean, wash. Some of these will get trimmed just for garnish and some will get used in, in you know, cooked down and whatnot. Like kind of like the bottom? Yeah, I grab it about halfway up and then just clip it right across when I'm holding. We make a wild green chimichurri, so we'll use the sticks. We make a spruce tip vinegar every year. Toss that in with some like pumpkin oil. Oh, it does have a uh, arugula flavor, yeah. for That's sure, that like spicy. Yep. So you have two different kinds of mint out, out here. Peppermint, and then here's spearmint. Spearmint, okay. So you got both kinds in your hands. <laughs> Fresh in the breath real quick. Yep. Ooh, there's mint. a lot of flavor. <laughs> Minty. <laughs> so I can usually tell what watercress is because it's got this long stem. The leaves are right next to each other. You've always got that one on the top and it does, it looks like arugula with a broad leaf. Got you. Cool. I haven't had breakfast either. <laughs> All right, to the next spot. Could I introduce myself in Navajo? All right. My name is Danielle Goldtooth. Wild Arizona cuisine was something that Brett dreamed up, but something that I had always wanted to try to do. And uh, what we've done is we take wild foods, uh, forage wild foods, and uh, we create uh, an entire experience, a dining experience, with our stories intertwined in it. So these will turn into yucca, they call them bacadas or banana yuccas. But the, the fruits themselves are usually highly tannic. It's really hard to find a good, natural, sweet one. So we take the flowers and use them uh, sort of in a similar way to baby artichokes. Oh, okay. These will all get pickled. I pickled up a couple the other day. Brett has this extensive knowledge of foraging. So getting back with Brett and Jaren really reopened my eyes to what I had been doing with my Navajo Diné families in times past with my grandmother and my great grandmother. We're going out and gathering. It just felt like at home again. Mother Earth is just like welcoming you back in some sense, you know? So it's like, oh, hi, you're home. How are you? <laughs> Years of like documentation and where we've been and what temperature it was when we were there and Nice. Rather than just a aimless stoner drive out into the into the wilds of Arizona, my parents moved from Michigan to Arizona. I grew up doing this with my family. And my dad is just curious at heart and an avid explorer and a really accomplished outdoorsman. Where I learned everything from making fires to to you know wild foods from him. This is it for pavement for 52 miles. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. Oh, so that's, is that them? Yep. Cattails. So the bigger they get, the more fibrous they get. Yeah. These are rhizomes, and so they're in the same family as like a wasabi or a horseradish that they're growing. These are all connected under the ground. Okay. <laughs> Big old stick right here. Carlos, not for you. Not dog food. <laughs> yeah, I started cooking pizzas as a teenager at the local pizza place. And that led me to go to Italy to learn how to make pizzas. And by the time I was done with Italy, I was making pasta and I'd learned how to butcher meat. Not only just fabricate the meat and break it down, but really, you know, what to do with it after that point. And then uh, down to Panama and LA and Chicago. And then I decided about seven years ago, it was time to come back home and stop living other people's dreams and chase mine. These will probably get a quick pickle, honestly, to garnish something. We pickle these and put them on sashimi all the time. 
really becoming a chef, I always wanted to incorporate it this way. I just never lived here until about seven years ago. When I moved back, that was that was the the main goal and the main focus was if I'm if I'm coming back to Arizona, I'm gonna really take a stab at how I think Arizona cuisine could be. Now here, like I don't want to stunt this plant's growth or anything like that, so I'm gonna take one more and then be done with this plant. But you can get it all cleaned up, and now from here, we just kind of treat it like green beans. Just split it, saute it off pickle them from there. We actually have farmer friends that are asking for a bunch of these from us, so nice. most yep. of this first round will be for them. Rule of thumb is only to take about one third of what you're looking at. You need it to regenerate and leave it for nature. You need to leave it for the birds and the bees and, and the animals. So we try and live by what we always tell people, the rule of thirds. Take a third for yourself, leave a third for nature, and leave a third to regenerate itself. And then what are these called? Chain fruit choya? Chain fruit choya. I'm taking a picture of all the plants that are foraging and putting them in my notes <laughs> so I know what they are. So these just get torched real quick and used pretty raw. If you, if you put much cook to them, they lose their color. Sweet. Watermelon, strawberry. Yeah, watermelon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, everybody. I hope you enjoy what you're watching. I sure enjoyed doing it. Leave a comment below of your favorite moment. Ask me any question and the best comments I'll read in the next video. All right. See you guys in the next one. So how long you been skateboarding? A long time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about as long as you've been foraging. <laughs> you know Tony Hawk? He's my freaking boss, man. <laughs> yeah, so right here we have an Ocotillo. Uh, I think we use it for a number of different things. We want to try and make a bitters with it this year. We use it for a lot of teas. And you're just harvesting the flowers right here? Yeah, I'm waiting for them to be like this. Like that. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. These are always fun to get whacked in the face with. <laughs> if the wind weren't so picked up, sometimes when we pull the larger ones down, they'll go up and go... And you can just hear them go up, it's so pretty. The fresh flower itself makes for a beautiful and sweet garnish. We've dehydrated them quite a bit and then they're, you know, they crumble. You can add it into, you know, texture and different colors in your, in your pasta mixes and things like that. It's, it's, it's highly versatile. We're on the hunt for wolf berries right now, aka goji berries, or from the family of goji berries. Here we are. Very. This is, the, this is the deepest we had to explore. Very f***ing beginning for, of the very for, beginning of the season. For our fruit today. Mhm. Mm These are wolf berries. Kind of tastes like a like a raspberry, like a bitter raspberry kind of. Huh? Like the manzanitas. It's good. Yeah. Twenty three dollars an ounce at Whole Foods, or you can just walk a little bit in the desert and find them yourself. Five minutes. Mhm. Mm these are gonna garnish the steam corn sushi on Friday night. As long as we have 40 of these, we're good. It's just like so nice to just kind of relax a little bit. It's like our zen time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like we deal with people on daily. Walking down the streets of Chicago versus this, it just it didn't, it never compared. And I, I don't, you'd never fault someone with the way they want to live their life. If, if you like the city life, then that's all fine and dandy, but man, there's not much beat in this. Can't really beat this, eh? No. Moon's out already. It was a good day. Brett knows his shit, and uh, we got to pick a bunch of good shit today. I learned a bunch of stuff. I think today was a great success. <laughs> Full cooler. For sure. Oh, here we go. Hell yeah. Now I'm really a chef. Oh, now I'm really <laughs> professional. We are at Brett's Kitchen right now, and we are gonna get what we forged yesterday and chop it up, see what we all got, and prepare for dinner tomorrow. Let's go. So it gets kind of exciting in the kitchen, because now we're in like creation mode in some senses. <laughs> oh my God, this is gonna be delicious. <laughs> Washing all the, all the berries. Because I think this is going to be used for garnish, so it's got to look nice and pretty. 
<laughs> See all this little stuff down there? That's what I'm trying to get rid of. Oh, like that really? would get into like all of your fingers and stuff. Yeah. This torch and oh, it's like sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah, it kind of looks cool. Knowing that you went and picked these things, that you appreciate it so much more. Oh, for sure. Yeah, you're Especially like, I don't want to waste big one. Bush and how tiny all the little berries yeah. are, and you're having to pluck them off one by one. Yeah, and no. And then even again the next day, you're still preparing. <laughs> <laughs> these cattails. Picked them yesterday. The big guns right here. Oh shit, you got a flamethrower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 31 years old, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's... I thought you were older. I thought you were like 50. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. Look at this beautiful cutting right here. <laughs> Master Chef Brett right here. He, he's cut some shit before, you guys. <laughs> Southwest Mushrooms right here. They provide Brett with his mushrooms. All local. Love it. And uh, Mike, thank you for these. You're the man. <laughs> this is a quick little pickle liquid. Let this simmer. We got cattail pickles for tomorrow's dinner. Woohoo! Out of the ground, washed, fabricated, preserved. Pick pickled? Ready to eat tomorrow. Hell yeah. I've never pickled anything before. I guess it's that easy. <laughs> it's my first time in a legit kitchen and uh, it's a magical place. They're gonna be working all night. My lazy ass is done. Yeah. <laughs> and, so, and we're gonna be having a feast tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm Excited as shit for it. Tomorrow, let's go. Are you a YouTuber? I try to pretend to be. <laughs> uh, it's not out yet, but forging with Jaws. Forging with Jaws? Yes. Are you filming this shit? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it because of your, your, your teeth? Uh, yeah, even when I was a little kid, I used to have gnarly braces. Yeah. And I used to look like uh, Jaws from 007 Moonraker. Oh, yeah. Big old metal mouth. Oh, big 007. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's a YouTuber too. Nice. Well, awesome. she has a little channel. Eric, nice to meet you. Yeah. You guys have a wonderful one. Take right. it easy. I love it. I love just when somebody has a camera, how curious people get. What we're doing tonight is we're in Cottonwood. We're in Arizona wine country and putting six different foraged and indigenous uh, ingredient courses together with Sam Pillsbury's wine right here. So Sam's a award-winning winemaker from Arizona and loves the Arizona culture with food and people. Wine, obviously, and how it all comes together. And he and I have done a lot of things together over the years. Tofu, cattails. Brett, I love you. Oh, cool. is this? <laughs> Eat it up. Oh. Look at this shit. I swear to God, half of this is, is cold, cold out of the desert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it's put together in these combinations. I throw Brett an idea. I, so let's do a veggio dinner. Look at this. One course of a veggio dinner, for God's sake. You die and go to heaven, you know. This is what real food is all about. And this man here is the one who puts it all together. And, he, and you know, you probably won't recognize him because he needs a shave, but he's pretty good. Vegan sashimi. So this is a roasted bell pepper. It's got a wild green chimichurri, wild mint stems, wild cattail relish on top of it, and leaves to garnish or a bunch of watercress. All of us collected this week. Mallows from my property and passion fruit leaves from my property. I, I just love really simple food. <laughs> We're about to start building this first course in 10 minutes for 6 o'clock. Right? <laughs> okay, let's get into it. know what our concept is, it's always going to revolve around wild Arizona cuisine. I mean, it's right right there in the title, and it's not being stuck right in Phoenix. We're in four different spots around the state each month. We get out and get the story out to more people. I want to represent Arizona and everything it's all about. Like tonight, it, it lends itself, I think, to a smaller intimate group where we can engage and interact with uh, the people that are there and they can see, hear, feel, taste exactly what we've been doing leading up to the culmination of this dinner. And the, if you want to know what we did Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday to, to make your dinner, whether it was out collecting mushrooms or Palo Verde berries or raising our own pigs or raising our own goats, and making our own cheese and telling a story on a plate. I didn't have chef idols or, or anything like that. And I, I love, you know, adventure stories. So I had more favorite authors than favorite chefs growing up. That's been my platform is cooking. And I, I love everything about it, but hopefully in a little bit of a different way than, than most others see it. And like, how can, we, how can we really give you a one of a kind, unique experience? This is the wonderful people we've been foraging with. <laughs> 
And uh, the day's done. We just had an amazing dinner. So let's fucking go. No! <laughs> Oh my god. The night is young. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for everything. Uh, if there's anywhere that you guys think that I should go forge next, let me know in the comments below. Hit us up and let me know where you want me to go next because I want to go explore some more stuff. And if you guys can, please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Um, I'm going to get watering. <laughs>